The common narrative out there right now with regards to money printing or quantitative easing is that it is a way of pumping more liquidity into the system. And while it might be putting more dollars into the system as a whole, it is actually removing the liquidity within banks. Nobody points this out better than Stephen Van Meter, so today I'll dive into how the Fed can print money without actually printing money, so stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to The Contrarian. My name is Logan. I really like to talk about overall success in investing as well as the psychological nature of markets. Um, just how every day you can see, at least to some degree, a sense of euphoria as well as panic within the markets and how investor psychology plays into this. So if you like these kinds of topics, just consider subscribing. I also want to make a disclaimer that none of this is financial advice. So to begin with, let's take a look into Stephen Van Meter and what knowledge he might have in this arena of the economy. Steve is the owner of Stephen Van Meter CFP. So he's a financial planner and he focuses on people's retirement and setting realistic goals and expectations for his clients with regards to their retirement. Above all this, he has recently been interviewed on many outlets explaining his views on QE or as it has been referred to recently as money printing. Namely, he comes across as a contrarian in this area. So the ultimate question is, how can something that produces liquidity in the form of monetary injection actually remove liquidity from the system? And the simple answer is that the Fed cannot print money without doing anything else. Like anything else in the government, the Fed cannot create anything out of thin air. It can only rearrange assets and liabilities it has on the balance sheet to make it seem like there is more money, in this case dollars, being created. So the short answer to this is that the Fed doesn't have any power to create dollars out of thin air like they claim. And there's no end to your ability to do that. There is no end to our ability to do that. They can only rearrange. But that isn't the full answer. The long answer is that it's more complicated than this. And Steve points this out, how the game the Fed is playing could ultimately lead to a collapse in the monetary system we have. The real reason why QE is actually deflationary and removes liquidity from the banking system is that QE involves the purchasing of bonds back from US banks by the US government. Now this all sounds reasonable right now, but in reality, the banks aren't actually able to use any of the money they receive as a result of the transaction, because the dollars they are given in exchange for the bonds aren't in their actual bank account to be used as they would desire. The Fed still gives them US dollars, but it's sort of like being a five-year-old who has a trust fund given to them by a relative. The money is technically added to your name and your net worth, but you cannot use it as you would like until you are legally an adult. The same goes for the banks. Because of the legal limitations around the Federal Reserve, they actually can't give the banks full leadership of the dollars that the banks receive. Instead, these dollars only appear on the bank's balance sheet as cash, when in reality the money is not able to be used by the banks to lend or invest or actually stimulate the economy. It's just sitting there in a bank sort of trust fund equivalent, if you want to think of it that way. So you can see why this would be deflationary. It would be the equivalent to selling an asset but being unable to use the cash you receive. It's still real dollars. You just can't use it to buy anything, to invest it, or generate mon monetary velocity. And that's the ultimate end game for quantitative easing or money printing, is that monetary velocity goes down significantly. Now everyone out there is always worried about inflation finally hitting after a decade of QE, as well as the 2.2 trillion of stimulus during the spring. But in reality the end game is likely to be just the opposite. Basic mathematics would tell us this. Inflation is essentially a very simple formula. Money supply multiplied by money velocity. Let's say that on any normal day before the COVID lockdown, I would leave my job, go to a restaurant, tip the waiter with an extra $10. Then they go and take a cab home with the $10 and the cab owner then goes and buys his next lunch with this $10. In total, this $10 has passed three hands, me to the waiter, the waiter to the cab driver, and the cab driver to the business owner. This is a monetary velocity of three times $10, which is 30. Now what happens if I just work from home and go shopping at Costco for all of my food instead? 
all of a sudden I've just cut out all of these smaller people and the monetary velocity has gone to 1 times 10, so 10. So it's been cut down by 3 times. It's just me to Costco now. So it makes sense why the monetary velocity has just fallen off of a cliff since the lockdowns and the economy slowed. Now in theory, if everyone just stayed home and saved everything, the money supply could expand infinitely and we would still have zero inflation. Zero times infinity is still zero. So you hopefully begin to see how none of the QE or stimulus has actually generated inflation in the last decade. Rather, it's led to a stagflation and definitely could lead to a deflation or negative inflation. Now this is no different for these banks who have massive amounts of unusable cash reserves. The banks can no longer lend money to borrowers at the previous rate as liquidity has been removed from the system. Even though this cash shows up on their balance sheets, it is unusable for them. So this also explains why lending has become increasingly tight the longer that QE has gone on. And the United States is definitely not alone in this. European banks and Asian banks are also in very similar, if not worse, situations. So the real question that remains is how has any inflation actually happened as a result of QE? If it actually removes liquidity from the banking system, what has caused the massive inflation we have seen mainly in asset prices over the last decade? And Steve goes on to argue that this is mainly psychologically driven. Investors have always been fearing that inflation would be caused by the Fed stepping in with QE, and so they have piled into assets as a way to escape this potential inflation they see coming. Now this is definitely what one would call a self-fulfilling prophecy as these asset prices then go up as a result of more buying and the cycle continues to go on as investors then see that oh inflation actually could be going on so I'm going to put more in. So for the last 10 years investors have been trained to quote unquote buy the dip and even this year when the markets corrected heavily in the spring this still would have worked well for those who bought the dip. The trouble with this is the Fed can only pretend to be backing up asset prices for so long. There is definitely a limit to how long this sort of mentality can go on. For example, even though the asset buying the Fed has done might seem significant, it is only a drop in the bucket compared to the overall market declines back in February and March. The truth was, it was mainly investors who gained confidence from the Fed who stepped in who actually bought a significant number of assets to send the prices back up. If investors had not done this, the markets would continue to have declined. There was simply no way the Fed could have bought enough. We saw this when the Fed would release a statement like they were buying junk bonds, and then investors would rush in and try to front run the Fed's actions by buying junk bonds. So it was definitely a psychological game that the Fed was trying to play with investors. We are being very aggressive, and I think our chairman, Jay Powell, has learned from the experience of 2008. We're moving much faster than we moved in 2008. We're being more aggressive. Is there more we can do? Yes. Is there more we may end up doing? Yes. But I think we're being very aggressive, and I, I think that's the right thing. So there's definitely a limit to how long this sort of mentality can go on within financial markets uh, of the Fed making excessive or simply untrue statements and investors following suit. Now, when does it all fall apart? I have no idea, but it does seem to be a house of cards situation where if investors panic and begin selling in mass, the whole system could fall apart. The Fed simply needs to continue to push this narrative that they can buy anything and everything to play with investors' psychology. So this is in short how um, quantitative easing or quote unquote money printing um, doesn't actually cause inflation. And yeah, if you want to see this full interview with Steve Van Meter, I'll put the link down in the description. There's also many different interviews he's done uh, out there online, so you can go and watch those. Um, but thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.